All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our session. My name is Victoria Hendrickson, and I'm with Org Vitality. And I'm going to go ahead and get things set up before I hand things off to our speakers. All of us at OB hope you're enjoying the conference so far. This is one of the final sessions in a two day virtual conference. So if you haven't gotten a chance to check out the other sessions, please do so at orgvitality.com. We have one more session after this at uh, three o'clock Eastern and then inv invite you all to join us for a virtual happy hour afterwards. You'll also be able to check out any of the recordings for sessions you've missed on the website next week. Uh, but moving on to this session, this is one I'm really excited about. Chris Lovato and Nicole Herc from Medtronic are here today to discuss employee listening during times of crisis. We'll talk about how they used their program in the early days of pandemic and, and some important implications. So many organizations are wondering what to do with their existing survey programs in these chaotic times. And I, I really think this presentation has some great insight to address those questions. You'll all receive a copy of the slides as well as a recording of today's session. So no need to take notes, sit back and enjoy the presentation. You're all on mute. So I would ask that if you do have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box of Zoom. I'll monitor those. And if we have some time at the end, we'll, we'll do that live. And if not, we'll answer you via email. So with that out of the way, I'd like to introduce you to your speakers. Our speakers today are people we've known and worked with throughout the years and have a great deal of respect for. And, and they're coming to us from Medtronic, an organization we really admire in terms of work in this space and overall organizational values. We have Dr. Chris Lovato, the Director of Human Capital Insights, and Nicole Herc, Manager of Employee Listening and Survey Consulting. So with that, I'll turn it over. Chris, take it away. Great, thank you, Victoria. Really appreciate you hosting this and uh, appreciate the partnership. So today we will be talking about our, um, our journey around uh, employee listening during this times of crisis. And I guess it's important to even know which crisis are we talking about? Um, what we'll primarily be focusing on, on the COVID-19 pandemic as opposed to you know, uh, several other we could list yet this year. So first, a little bit about our company. Um, Medtronic is the world's largest medical technology company. We're best known for our pacemakers, which incidentally are now about the size of a capsule, if you can believe it. Um, but our portfolio includes more than 213,000 global products, which diagnose, prevent, mitigate, treat, or cure diseases or other conditions. Uh, some of the other interesting products we have include deep brain stimulators, robotic surgery, and diabetes data management software, uh, just to name a, a few examples. But more than two people every second have their lives improved by, by our solutions. So there's a lot of pride in our organization, a, a lot of pride in our mission that's stated up there to alleviate pain, restore health, and extend life. Now, our particular team, um, uh, Nicole and I, we uh, work with the Human Capital Insights team. We're essentially a workforce analytics function. We've got about 17 team members around the globe. And um, you can see here on the right, they will include uh, some functions such as our analytics consulting team, which is made up of several um, data analysts that consult with our business units and functions on their data and analytic needs. Uh, we have the, 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 the group that Nicole uh, heads up, which is the employee listening and survey consulting function. We have HR metrics, uh, which provide analytic support for HR. Um, we also work in the area of assessments for selection and 360s for development. And our predictive and advanced people analytics team made up of, of um, some of our data scientists they will build models using AI, machine learning, and, and, and other data science solutions to deliver uh, at scale across Medtronic. We also do use um, other resources available um, inside and outside the company. That's a little bit about our group. So next is a, a little bit more about the employee listening and survey consulting program. So there are four pillars within this program, just to kind of give you some context. Um, first is our Organizational Health Survey, or OHS. You can think of it as our annual physical and our six-month checkup. 
but it, it is a survey that gives voice to our 90,000 employees and it measures things such as engagement, inclusion, innovation, ethics, and several other organizational culture and employee experience um, aspects. Second would be our employee experience pillar, which would include a series of other surveys, polls uh, across the entire employee life cycle that measure employee experience at crucial points in time and on a variety of other topics. So recently, we've had a, a return to work pulse survey just to kind of get a temperature check of uh, are, are people you know, considering re returning to work. We're not going to talk about that today, but the results were an overwhelming, I don't know. <laughs> so not surprising. Um, third pillar is the Survey Center of Excellence, which provides support and governance of surveys to align our efforts at, across Medtronic overall. So there's a host, as you can imagine, a host of all kinds of other surveys throughout the company. And, and so we try to provide some um, consulting around that, some alignment, some, uh, um, so some governance. And then finally, we, we put in a, a whole pillar just on the research from all of this, the survey research, um, because there's, there's quite a bit of done here in, in the area of hypothesis testing and other exploratory research to really find those insights and actions that are really going to positively impact the business. So we're an organization that really loves data, uh, it, it obviously you know, prone to innovation and, and high tech. So, so our, our team is tapped frequently for, for this kind of information. So with that, I'll turn it over to Nicole to uh, kind of begin the, the story of our journey. Nicole? Perfect, thank you, Chris. So what we've got featured here on the slide is a little bit of a timeline for our organizational health survey. Now, Chris mentioned that we have the census survey or that, that annual. Uh, this one is the six month checkup, if you will. So this is a, a timeline of our, our pulse survey that we administer. This goes out to our online employee population. So with this survey, uh, we, we go out to those individuals that are actively using their Medtronic issue email address and we ask them to participate. While this excludes a, a portion, a large portion of our direct labor operations team, we are still inviting over 70,000 employees to take this pulse survey. So this pulse survey this year launched on March 10th. So we knew on that date that there were teams, you know, we're a global organization. We knew we had colleagues in China and Italy that were being impacted by COVID-19. But truthfully, we weren't really feeling the full impact here in the United States at that time. So we went ahead and we launched the survey as planned on the 10th. But just 24 hours later, on March 11th, which is coincidentally, I think, six months to the date, the World Health Organization declares COVID a global pandemic. So, you know, just that categorization alone really changes how we think about it, how we feel about this. But fast forward just five days after that, and Medtronic issues this work from home practice. So now, now Medtronic is asking, like many other companies, asking employees to work from their home environment. So we've got you know, colleagues that are now sitting at their kitchen countertop, likely with you know, a partner, spouse, you know, children perhaps that are doing distance learning, all in that same environment. So certainly changing the how and the where we work. Now we've also got that March 20th date in which the survey closed, and we'll talk more about some things that transpired between the, the 10th and the 20th in just a moment. But a couple of other call outs, March 27th being that stay at home order going into effect in Minnesota. Uh, we've got a large corporate uh, corporate presence here in Minnesota, so that impacted, of course, a number of our other colleagues. And then finally, April 14th, that's the date in which we released organization, uh, organizational health survey results. Now, we could, of course, could add many, many other dates in this time frame, probably on a, a daily basis, but just kind of wanted to feature some of the things that were, you know, transpiring uh, along with the organizational health survey that was underway. So as we said, you know, we, that between that March 10th and then 20th dates and things, you know, things were bubbling up a bit. We started to hear from a few people within the organization a bit of concern uh, around the administration of a survey in the midst of a crisis. So some people were coming to us and saying, you know what, we really, we ought to let our leaders focus on the crisis at hand rather than asking our leaders to, you know, promote or, or to drive participation in the survey. Others were saying similarly, you know, employees don't have capacity right now. They are trying to manage and balance this whole new, you know, work from home environment with all the other implications of that 
leaders and leaders and employees alike don't have capacity. Some were approaching this from a strictly data driven perspective and saying, you know what, scores are going to tank. We're going to see a decline in our scores. Our trend lines are going to be skewed. And, and for what? You know, we don't have capacity to actually take action on the results of this time. So, you know, our team, the Human Capital Insights team, you know, we heard these concerns and certainly, you know, appreciate and respect that, that voice. But, you know, we were, we were in the camp of wanting to keep the survey open and, and, you know, a bit concerned about a message it might send if we closed the survey in the midst of this. So we took this recommendation to our, our HR leadership team and to their credit, they agreed. They also, you know, respected what we were hearing from a few in the, within the organization, but said, no, let's keep it open. This is more important than ever that we listen to the voice of the team at this time. So the survey stayed open and we got those results in April, which we shared on that timeline. And it was a very, very interesting story. So I think for those of you that had the opportunity yesterday to join the, the presentation given by Scott Brooks around, you know, what tends to happen or might happen in the midst of a crisis to employee survey results. You know, Scott shared some findings from 9-11 from and from other instances where we actually saw a large increase or uptick in scores overall. And that is actually what we saw within Medtronic as well. So employee engagement was increased. You know, employees were feeling increased sense of motivation and increased uh, sense of commitment to the organization. Pride in Medtronic was at an all-time high. Feelings of inclusion and, and innovation were up. We are a med tech company, so having an organization and a culture that fosters innovation is very important to us. So that certainly was a welcomed, welcome score. But we also saw that employees were telling us they were you know, feeling better about safety within the organization. They were you know, satisfied with the communications that they were getting. And we saw this increased sense of confidence and trust in our senior leadership. Again, very similar to what Scott shared yesterday in some of the research he's done. But interestingly, we also saw an increase in questions around the execution of work. So we've got a whole host of questions dedicated to, you know, your access to resources within the organization, access to information, you know, your ability to, to work across and through others. We're, we're a highly matrixed organization. So we, we tend to, you know, want to understand how easy it is for employees to work th through this matrix. And, even those questions were seeing increases. In fact, some of our largest improvements year over year were on questions about executing work. So we were very pleased with these results and happy to see and hear that employees were feeling good, especially about things that you know, we deem critical to navigate through a crisis. But yet we wanted to know more. We wanted to dive in a little bit deeper and understand the employee experience specifically as it relates to COVID. You know, we had questions about safety within our organizational health survey, but we wanted to know specifically about access to PPE. You know, we still had employees in some places actually going in and working on site. We still had employees going into clinical, clinical facilities. So we wanted to know, do you have access to, access to the, uh, the PPE you need to even enter that building? We also wanted to know about employee well-being specific to the crisis. So, you know, we've got, as we said, those employees sitting at the kitchen counter working alongside their family members. A lot of chaos perhaps happening around that environment. There's a very real crisis happening outside of your front door. How are you feeling? How are you managing at the, all of this at this time? We wanted to know about workload and how that compared to pre-COVID. We wanted to know about barriers to work. Is there anything getting in your way to you actually executing your work at this time? We were curious about stress. Has that improved or, or have we seen a decline in stress at all since the last survey? We do track that on our, our uh, organizational health survey. We wanted to know about confidence and leadership and specifically about, you know, your, your perceived ability of our leaders to navigate us through this crisis. And then finally, we wanted to provide an open forum for feedback, just give employees a place where they could share their voice and tell us what else they needed, what we could do to better support them at this time. So we did this through the implementation of a couple uh, additional listening mechanisms. The first of which was an employee wellness pulse survey. So the goal here was to really examine the impact of the crisis on employees and just to understand what other types of support they needed. So we did this through a, a 16 item survey, a confidential survey that we emailed out to employees in early May. We invited around 14,000 employees to participate and we used a, a stratified random sampling procedure here. We wanted to, you know, to the extent that we could be able to go back to our executive committee and say, you know, we, while we uh, sample the popular uh, subset of your population, we are confident that the revol results reflect that overall voice. So that 17,000 or excuse me, 14,000 employees that we invited, 
of which we had nearly 50% respond. So for those of you on the call that, that are familiar with employee surveys and with these ad hoc type surveys, you know that we typically see lower response rates for these kind of surveys. You know, they, they don't have that central communications channel typically. They're not as well socialized. They're, they're not on an annual or cyclical basis. So we just, we don't tend to see what we might see for a response rate in those other, you know, uh, annual, annual employee surveys. So for us to see that 47%, we were very pleased with that. Now we supplemented that within these polls. So we did these weekly polls. And the goal here was just to gather this in real time feedback to help, help tell the story and better understand the story of our employees. So what we did was to place one question on our internet site on a weekly basis from end of April through end of May. Now we did have a couple of questions that actually overlapped with our wellness pulse. And, and this was intentional. We wanted to, to test the methodology a bit and see, do we get similar responses from individuals that we are actively soliciting feedback from, as well as those individuals that are opting into the survey. What, what kind of similarities do we see in the data? And, you know, we were very pleased to see that there's similar responses across those items that were deployed during uh, via different vehicles. So to us, that served as a mini validation of sorts with that methodology. We also had a really strong partnership with our communications team here. And I think that was one of the biggest wins of all of this here, but we would work with our comms partners to say, okay, these are the types of questions we wanna ask. And they in turn would say, okay, this is the type of resources that we've got coming down the pipeline. This is the content we're, we're making available on our, our homepage. These are the different resources we'll be deploying over the next few weeks. So to the extent that we could, we tried to kind of marry the two. So, you know, if you think about it from an employee perspective, they go into their homepage, they see a poll question, perhaps the question is around safety. Do you feel safe? You know, you, you answer that poll question, immediately you get feedback. You see how your response compares to others within the organization. And then you also see a number of different pieces of content or, or resources about how Medtronic, what Medtronic is doing to provide a safe environment for you at this time, what additional resources you can seek out, et cetera. So just providing a more holistic story for employees in, in taking this poll. Now, some of the insights and the key takeaways we found from this were some strengths again around safety. So employees continue to tell us that they felt safe, they had access to PPE. Also, our employee population was actually adapting really well. So despite what was going on, despite all the challenges that people were facing on account of COVID, well-being was really high. Employees were also satisfied with the communications they were getting specific to the pandemic, and they were confident that our leaders could navigate us through this, get us to the other side, whenever that might be. Now, a few opportunities we had, different things we heard were one, one concern around workload. So we had pockets of the organization that were telling us that they were working more each day on account of COVID. As we dug in deeper, the places where we saw this, it certainly made sense. You know, you've got supporting functions, that their role is to help transition uh, an entire employee population from a majority of an employee population from an office setting to a virtual environment. That's a big undertaking. You've also got operations employees who are working to implement additional safety and health protocols within our manufacturing facilities. So certainly where we saw this, it, it made sense, but it was great information that we're able to leverage and share out with the appropriate teams. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Another thing we saw was stress, understandably, right? Employees were telling us that things are a little bit uh, chaotic at this time and I'm feeling a little bit of stress, but overall a positive story. Now, what did we do with this information? You know, this type of survey and this polling methodology, this isn't you know, to be shared out with leaders to ask them to put local action plans into place. Rather, we use this information to help inform our crisis management efforts. So we had, of course, you know, our overall crisis management team, and then we had a, uh, an offshoot of that, you know, focused specifically on people. And then underneath that, all these different little areas focused on, you know, that were activated uh, based on different needs. So we had, you know, a need to understand the employee experience through this. We had a group that was centered on productivity and, and mitigating burnout. You know, we know that we've got employees working more. How can we mitigate burnout? We had employees that were focused on remote work and understanding what the needs were employees and how we could bet, best meet those needs. So we kind of just did a, a road show of sorts and went to these different groups and shared the findings overall and also shared findings specific to each one of these groups that they could use in making decisions. You know, I would say another piece here was a really strong partnership again with our communications team, you know, helping to inform their communication strategy, 
helping to, you know, we found this really great alignment between the findings we were, we were providing them from the survey and the content they were making available. So again, you know, we could put something, uh, either push something out to, communi uh, to employees, communications to employees, or post something on our internet site that says, you know, two weeks ago, uh, we heard you. you, we asked you to take a survey, you provided this feedback, thank you for sharing, you know, kind of closing the loop with our employees there. And then saying, based on the feedback, here's some really great resources. For instance, a thriving virtually resource guide. You know, just pairing wherever we could to kind of, again, close that loop with employees, tell them we heard them, and then let them know what we were doing to support them based on the information they were providing to us. So, you know, we were really pleased with the ability to quickly go out, get this data, and share it with the teams that were using it to make decisions quickly and, and get that information in the hands of our employees. Now, where are we current state with this? So we are now at a point where we're administering another organizational health survey. So, you know, this one where I've got simplified there in quotes because we are still just going out to our online employee population with this survey. So we're in the point where actually right now where we are releasing results to the organization. We're holding those results to a little bit higher level, but we are going to be supplementing that with additional topical polls and pulses in the coming months. Chris had made mention of a return to office strategy survey that we just did. You know, our, our executive committee wanted to have get some information around, you know, employee comfort level in returning, when might they want to return, and what might be, you know, some of those key things they need in order to feel comfortable to return. So quickly being able to gather that information that can be used as a data point in making decisions. We're also going to be looking at employee resilience. You know, employees told us months ago that they were well-being was high, they were still feeling good. We are now, you know, months further into this crisis. How are you doing today? What is your overall well-being? We know that inclusion and diversity uh, is a very big issue right now outside the, the four walls of Medtronic, you know, and society at large. But we want to make sure that we're measuring perce perceptions of it within the organization. And thinking specifically about inclusion, you know, we've got new ways to try to stay connected to our employees. So do employees feel that? Is that sense of connection still there when we're in a virtual workforce? We also want to know about organizational transformation. So you know, one thing we did not include in that timeline, but a very big, uh, very big thing within Medtronic is a CEO transition. So late last year, our CEO announced his retirement. So we had a planned transition for this April, which of course falls in the midst of all the, the, the COVID crisis. So on the heels of that transition, of course, comes some changes. So we are doing a little bit of a restructuring, looking at some, some transformational efforts. So we just want to understand from an employee perspective how they're feeling about all of that along with all of the other things related to COVID. We're going to be using this information to conduct deeper research, of course, linking that to any organizational outcomes as we can. We've also got that predictive analytics team within our human capital insights team. And so to the extent that we can share data points with them that they can use in, in creating their predictive models, we certainly want to do that. We also want to create a bit more governance around the administration of surveys. So, you know, Chris had mentioned that we are, you know, we've got the survey COE that falls within our team here. And we're starting to see more surveys kind of bubble up across the organization. You know, leaders wanting to understand how their employees are feeling. HR partners wanting to understand the experience of employees. You know, really, really well-intended surveys popping up. But to the extent that we can kind of get our arms around that, we, we'd like to do that. You know, is there a way that we can leverage data we've already collected so we don't need to administer another survey? Or is there a way that we can help you ask questions that will not, uh, not give our, our data privacy partners any, any cause for concern or help you get the most actionable results at the end of the day? So definitely gonna be playing a bigger role there. And then finally, exploring additional ways to measure sentiment. So as I mentioned, you know, our, our direct labor population, we haven't been able to reach some of them, given all of those health and safety protocols that are in place. So rather than trying to leverage, you know, our, our traditional methodology, methodology of getting survey feedback with them through a kiosk, we're exploring other ways to collect that voice and just to make sure that we're hearing from all of our employees throughout this time. So next, I'm going to uh, toss it back over to Chris, and he's going to talk about some of the lessons learned throughout all this. And then we will open it up to questions. Yeah, and this is our last slide. Really, we just wanted to reflect back on this journey and, and, and all of the lessons that we that we had in this short period of time. You know, what one was really that employee listening is critical in, in, in the crisis. Uh, uh, and I think 
uh, probably preaching to the choir, but it, it was, um, it, we, we were kind of prepared for a, 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 a bit of a battle with some, uh, with some people really saying, we need to shut the survey down right now. But, you know, so proud that our organization said that, you know, the, the right thing to do is to keep the conversation going with our employees. And, uh, and you know, people thought that nobody's going to be taking the survey after, after that, that uh, you know, March 11th date, but actually we had a very strong response rate. So I, I think we learned a lot that, you know, as more crises have come up, we're 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 finding that that more than ever we need to continue to to reach out to people. Um, we we found uh, leveraging our internal network was extremely important. Um, it, we we had um, discovered that throughout our entire organization during this pandemic crisis, there were a number of other surveys uh, about to be launched or being launched. Um, because uh, you know other people had some of the same things. I'm, I'm worried about my people and so forth. So we had to try to get ahead of that as much as possible and incorporate their feedback so that we could have you know a, a larger, more uh, inclusive um, survey and, and sharing results um, broadly. But it also showed us that we need to you know kind of uh, continue our, our our governance and, and survey COE uh, efforts. The external networks, I think, were, were ex absolutely re really helpful. So, uh, Org Vitality has talked about their um, their kind of uh, uh, surveys that they've made available for free. We used uh, several of those items um, for the wellness survey, and we, we've we found them all very helpful, in, including some of the benchmarks. So, um, it, it, that's that that's been you know a, a really good resource. Um, the the re the hypotheses uh, you know we really reached out to a lot of our leaders to find out what are your questions so I give you one example at one point our CHRO has sent an article I can't remember where it came from but an article saying right now during this pandemic people are working on average three hours uh, more per day and so we had uh, thankfully we we saw that we incorporated that question into our our survey, and in fact, we did find that it was uh, similar. A large majority were, were working three or more hours per per day. Now, there's a number of reasons for that, as as Nicole uh, talked about, but uh, it, it was really helpful to have that really quick um, uh, uh, data available to you know to to test that hypothesis. And and finally, uh, you know, we we. we most of the time we had been spending our time on the OHS survey before this pandemic. You know, they're, they're very large surveys, they're, they're months long projects, and we, we really wanted a way to, to introduce some more pulse surveys. And this gave us a perfect opportunity to, to do that and to really show that we can have other surveys that are very, very nimble. Um, they, they may not you know, provide a report to every single manager, but they, they, they provide a, a lot of value otherwise. So um, we're, we're continuing to leverage this. And, and, and as Nicole talked about, I'm really looking at new technologies as well, kind of beyond the traditional survey front. So with that, um, I'll send it back over to you, Victoria, just if you want to take some Q&A. Thank you. I appreciate this. It's, it's been really insightful. I uh, appreciate both of you sharing the journey with us today. Um, we do have time for, for one or two quick questions. And again, uh, for everyone on the line, if you do want to submit a question, even if we don't have time to answer it live, we can certainly uh, answer it via email afterwards. So please enter those on Zoom. Uh, but the first question I see here uh, is in regards to those findings around workload and stress. <laughs> so the question is, how do you address opportunities of workload and stress that are unavoidable in a pandemic? Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I'll let you kind of um, chime in, Nicole, as well. But my, my initial thought is that, um, you know, the, the stress question was one that we actually were able to track that over multiple years. And, and, and we'd seen that, uh, that stress levels were going down. We we're expecting to see a spike um, during this pandemic, but actually they were still uh, going down. So that was, that was good to see. However, there was still lots of room for improvement. So I, I think it goes back to some of the task forces that we had that were really looking at and doing things like emphasizing taking uh, you know pay time off, 
uh, emphasizing that people do take breaks and tr and really try to put some boundaries around their their work life uh, as well. And for those that may be experiencing you know a heavy amount of stress, we we instituted more policies around family leave or um, you know flexible uh, working arrangements and so forth. So I, I think some of those things have helped. Nicole, would you add anything? No, I think you've covered it. Yeah, that definitely just kind of digging in a little bit deeper, I guess, to, to look at some of, yes, that, that time off and how we can try to promote a, a culture that really allows for that and, and telling people that you've got the flexibility to take this. That was one, one big thing we did internally. Mm -hmm. Really important. Thank you. Uh, we are at the, the end of our time today. Um, I would encourage everyone to, to reach out to Chris and Nicole with any other questions you have. Um, their contact information is on the slide here and will be part of the slides sent out at the conclusion of the virtual conference. Thank you all for attending and thank you again, Chris and Nicole. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.